Welcome back everyone to Tie and Gig Builds. New build, new week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this week we're gonna redo this message board I got here. No effort like last time. Yeah, no effort. Too easy. Kid, is there negative effort? It could be like the zero second like, locked. Oh, it's board. like, it's zero like- Zero effort. It's like Phil Swift. Like with the last project, we just sprayed Phil Swift. This is gonna be even easier. So easy. We were in the shed last time, trapped in the shed with the little easy up tent. You guys saw that. It was brutal, absolutely brutal. So apparently our wood's not long enough. Uh, rookie mistake. We need about 100 inches of board and we just don't have that in this piece. Yeah, you remember the 100 acre woods? Well, this is a 100 inch wood and <laughs> <laughs> You live and you learn. We have plenty of wood here now. And it looks really good, actually. Yeah. It's mahogany. You can't go, it's mahogany. Yeah, it's mahogany. Whenever you hear mahogany, you go, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Mahogany candle, mahogany, yeah, I got these mahogany curtains. Over at the miter saw, we started making our 45 degree cuts. I'm just ripping one off the end of the board here. Having a clean cut from ripping the end of the board off, I flip it over and use a clamp as a stop. So I'm able to make repeatable cuts so both sides will be the same height. We're just gonna cut these little slots in the piece of wood here just so that we can slide in our LED message board, our back, our front screen, and then we're gonna adjust its width depending on what material we're using. We're just gonna use this test piece to do that. We screwed this test piece up very badly. So yeah, we'll show you a clip of when this guy got actually chopped up. And destroyed. Just a note to yourself, mahogany, indestructible. Later. Remember what we were saying about mahogany earlier? It's more than nice. <laughs> it's, it's got a little edge to it. Yeah. Here's the first time we run the wood through the table saw. This will clear out enough space for us to put the plastics piece through that will act as the front of the message board. In a later step, we're gonna cog out more space for the backer board, which will contain the LEDs and also be the back panel of the message board. Can you get any better <laughs> than that? You can't. You remember like, what we said it. about mahogany? We take it back. Yeah. It's nice. You can cut mahogany however you want. Back at the table saw, we set the fence properly for the other cuts. We'll be running these through the, the blade multiple times just to get the proper width that we need to fit the backer board in between those screws. This is how the cuts are looking, guys. All we have to do, folks, we have to pick up this, this backer board. I guess it's like paper composite or something, and that's it. If you're wondering where our board is, is actually the hardest place possible to get. It's called Murphy's Law, which basically says it's gonna be the hardest thing possible yeah. at all, all times. All times. We thought, oh, we're never gonna, we're never gonna use this again. Oh God, it's it's at least half out of the way. This is moving. We need to step back. <laughs> I don't think this is long enough. Oh. Do you, do you know why they did this? So it would be hard as. Got it. Well, looks like we're going to Home Depot. We're back from Home Depot. That's right, it was a battle, but we came back. <laughs> we're gonna take this piece of backer board here and we're gonna cut it to size. We're gonna put some LEDs on top of this backer board. So we took the board over to the table saw to get it cut to the proper width. This way it'll fit right through the grooves. This board is gonna be used to hold the LEDs and also as a backstop. As you can see, the dry fit looked good, so we're able to move to the glue up. During the glue up, we glued the mitered corners very, very heavily, and then we stuck it on top with the clamp. We're gonna come back with dowels to reinforce this, so this is okay. So the glue up went great. We're gonna put some dowels here, to reinforce the joints. These miters are, are probably not gonna be as strong as we'd like them to be, so we gotta put these dowels in there, saw them off, drill holes, you know how it goes. Here I am drilling holes for those dowels. I added a piece of masking tape so I'm get, able to get even depth for each of the dowel holes. I added a generous amount of glue to the holes. I didn't want these things to go anywhere. I wanted it to really be strong. And so I, I smacked the dowels in right here and added some masking tape to prevent me from scratching the wood when I sawed it off. So when we did the glue up, we actually only glued up three sides because we want to be able to get to the contents of the inside. This other piece that we did not glue up is going to be attached by magnets here. But since this piece is not actually attached to the, to the component, we didn't need dowels for it. But to keep it consistent, I'm just going to drill holes and put some more dowels in here. I performed the same exact steps for this piece as I did the other side. All right, folks, so it's time to start programming this thing to put words on the screen. 
Truthfully, it's going to be difficult if you're not a programmer or a tech savvy to be able to set this up. I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero to control the LED strips. The LED strips I'm using is the WS2812B model. That just means that each LED is individually programmable, which you'll need for this use case. We need a power supply to power up the strip, and I need to also create a circuit in order to send the information from the Raspberry Pi to the strips correctly. The next video will show me programming it and all the details of that, but right now I'm just gonna go through this, create the program, run it through the Raspberry Pi, set up the Pi, it's gonna hit the strips and put some words on the screen. So the first thing I did was I started soldering up the circuit. This is needed to make sure that the signal coming from the Raspberry Pi has a proper voltage going to the LED strip. I then moved on to adhering the LED strips to the backer board. I used a straight edge and some clamps to make sure that the lines are perfectly straight. All right, all right. It came out pretty good, I thought. The lines are pretty straight. I really love the way it looks. So I, I'm going to put it in the box, and if I really like the way it looks, I might cement it in with some, some more hot glue or something because I'm not sure I trust this adhesive, but it looks great. I love it. At this point in time, the glue from the dowel was able to fully dry, so I took a sanding pad to it and removed as much as I could until it was flat. I then came back with a lighter grid, I think this is 120, and I'm just smoothing the surface. I did this to all sides as well as hand sanded the inside to make sure I didn't get any splinters and I moved up to 220 for the outside to get it a nice smooth surface. At this point in time it was ready for some finish so I took out this can of lacquer I had, grabbed the crappiest brush and just soaked this thing in lacquer. I mean I applied about two or three coats, it ended up coming out really good, I really like the finish. All right, so she's been polished down. She's looking real good. And actually, great thing is, we don't have to pour any water into this. So there's no possibility for a leak. So you're gonna have to sit this one out, Mr. Swift. Yeah. We're gonna start drilling in some holes so we can insert the magnets to keep the wood together. Okay. Like I said, another eat. <laughs> another. <laughs> <laughs> I took out the drill, which is about the same width as the magnets I'm about to use. Drilled some holes, put some CA glue in there to make sure it was nice and tight. Sprayed activator to instantly cure. Yeah, let's give her a little test run. Because it should be st stuck by now. Because that was an instant, right? Yeah, it was an instant. Okay. Oh! Look at that! Well, you looky here! So here's a shot of the finished product. It came out looking great, and so we ended up putting the electronics in. We plugged everything in, and then we moved on to hot gluing it to the bottom. We didn't have any spacers, so we were satisfied with this. Final step was throwing in the LED panel and plugging it in. Drum roll, please! I'm so pumped. This thing looks amazing. I couldn't be happier with how it came out. The mahogany was such a great idea. Feels great, it's smooth. We still have to cut some plastic to put in the front. We don't have it right now, but it's not long enough and we don't want to have two pieces of plastic. So that will be fixed in the future. But aside from that, I love this thing. If you like this video, please subscribe. Consider liking all those different weird things. We're gonna have a new one coming at you next week. It'll be a tech how-to on how we did this uh, with programming and all that crap. The next video on top of that will be a woodworking build. It'll have a very interesting, unique build I don't think many people have seen. Think there's anything you've been thinking about you wanted to see or you think would be suitable for this channel, let us know. We will take it into consideration.